Good morning YouTube and uh, welcome back to another vlog. Uh, a little bit of deja vu, similar to the start of a vlog about this time last year. Just before 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm on my way to Gatwick again. All of these vlogs seem to start at Gatwick for some reason. Anyway, it's uh, back to Basel for Basel World 2019. Um, I'm very lucky to have an appointment with uh, George Kern uh, from Breitling once again. Mr. Kern's been uh, running the company for a little over a year now as the CEO, um, so I'm interested to catch up with him again, find out what the developments have been, the highs and lows of the first full 12 months, and uh, what Basel World has to offer this year. Early flight out this morning, it's uh, 3 a.m., did I mention that? Probably. And uh, the show today, um, and I've also uh, been invited to the uh, Breitling Summit this evening. Not really sure what that's going to be all about until we get there. Staying overnight tonight, probably a brief visit to the show in the morning um, and then a flight back uh, tomorrow afternoon. So uh, looking forward to it. be interesting to see what uh, the show's got to offer in general, but particularly what Breitling have got to show me today. Um, so I'll see you at Gatwick. So another successful flight, um, arrived in Basel, checked into the hotel, now we're going to head to the show. Public uh, transport negotiated, let's see what Basel World 2019 has to offer. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. If anything, the uh, Basel World Show seems somewhat busier than it was last year. Um, a lot of people here. Stands have put in the usual effort in terms of production. Uh, my appointment today is with uh, Breitling. I'm going to be meeting with George Kern, who's the CEO. It's going to take me through the new range of watches and the direction that the company is going to be taking over the coming years. Okay, so I'm uh, on the uh, Breitling stand at uh, Basel World. Uh, very privileged to be with uh, George Kern, CEO of Breitling, for the second time. Thank you for, for having me back. Sure. And uh, just going to have a bit of a chat about what's happening with uh, both the show and Breitling at the moment. So your second year at Basel World as the CEO of Breitling, what's the general vibe with the show? Is it, is it positive with the, the yourself and the other luxury brands at the moment? Now we are very happy at Breitling because we've uh, introduced all these new products in social, on, on social media over the last couple of days and the response has been uh, phenomenal. Uh, in particular for the uh, 806 uh, Navi timer from 1959. But everything has been very successful, um, the Super Ocean, and I will walk you through uh, a couple of, of these new products. So the response has been very good, the retailers are very positive. We are true alternative in the market uh, towards the other brands. It's, it's a much more relaxed uh, brand, more, of course, more outdoor, more action-oriented. Uh, more informal um, and I think that's that's exactly what they were looking for um, uh, as, as a brand um, and, um, and, and and you know we have now the rollout of our boutiques we have the rollout of our new display material so you see and you you can grab in a in a very concrete way now the, the Breitling and um, uh, also in, in this year we can really satisfy, I would say, these two communities I was mentioning last year. Right. The, uh, I would say, more traditional Breitling community looking for smaller watches, uh, being in love with the premiers and the top times of the 40s and 50s. 
and I would say the recent past community looking for the big uh, but tasteful uh, sports watches and we have uh, some, some very cool products this year. So we have a very balanced collection and I think everybody is, is very reassured about um, the direction we're taking and, and things are doing extremely well. I'm very happy uh, about what happened uh, since the last couple of days. Good. So in the last year you took over the brand and, and you've made some significant changes. Um, I think we should largely been seen as very positive. So in the last 12 months, what have you? What would you class as, as, you, as your biggest success, and what have your what have your challenges been? I think uh, the new lines we've we've uh, launched of the last year, in particular the the premier, um, were in a way icebreakers towards the new direction yeah. uh, and towards a new customer base because these are different customers and. Uh, the customers uh, uh, of, I would say, the recent past, but also the Aviator 8 uh, Curtis uh, in the more classic aviation uh, field has been very well welcomed, especially also with all the storytelling, be it on the Curtis with that mythical plane with the shark mouse, mm -hmm. the different colors, but also the idea of our capsule collection with the uh, you know, to, to, to honor the golden age of aviation, of Pan Am, TWA, Swiss Air, and that dream of Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. So this storytelling has been enhanced a lot, yep. um, and, um, and that works uh, very well. But again, we have a very balanced collection, um, and, and I think that, um, that sports watch, that Super Ocean, which is a diving watch, uh, mainly is is, uh, is is also reflecting that equilibrium we have in the brand. Sure. You, you mentioned the, the P40 range there, uh, you know, fantastic product. I love the, the type with Ollie Crawford, that's a great, that's a great story. So uh, f as far as the show is concerned, there's some new products which you've talked about in social media recently. Yes. So can you sort of walk us through this sort of aviation linked products? What's the story behind them and, and what okay. have you got to talk about for us? So. The, the, the big star, I think, of the fair is definitely the re-edition, and we've been working here with uh, Fred Mandelbaum, who is the biggest collector of Breitling in, uh, in the world, I would, I would say, and he has been, um, in a positive way, extremely painful. I mean, <laughs> this, this uh, product went uh, uh, back and forth uh, 20 times to be, really be as accurate as possible in terms of size, in, in terms of dial, in terms of execution, we had to develop a new movement because obviously this movement of that time doesn't exist anymore so we've developed a new hand-wound uh, uh, chronograph movement which is great with 70 hours of power reserve but everything in that watch is really uh, very very much uh, reflecting the product of that time and, and the collectors loved it and commented it uh, extremely well uh, as I said we've, we've launched our first um, capsule collection which which is basically um, a product available in the market for a limited period of time, but these watches are not numbered. Right. So it's really about a story, and there will be another capsule collection at the, at the end of the year. We've launched now, after the, the, the great success of the 38 millimeter automatic Navi timer, we've launched, or we're launching this year, the 41 millimeter, so it's more targeting men, right. but I would say it was a more classic taste, but it's very different. So you you, you clearly find the slide rule uh, of the typical slide rule of the uh, of the Navi timer, but in a more I would say classic uh, way. So that that will work uh, certainly very well. Indeed, one of my most preferred products of the last month is by far the the Curtis Warhawk. I love the color. I love the story. I love Ollie Crawford and. And the stories he told us since he has been flying that uh, that plane for over 60 years, yeah. and um, and and we have great products also on the premier with the Norton, mm -hmm. uh, which which is amazing, and uh, the Bentley with a wooden dial, the Centenary uh, line. So many, I would say, unique pieces in the collection. Very strong with a strong story, and and some great additions also here. Uh, and, and also for, for women, typically uh, 
uh, a typical Breitling watch, um, you know, on the super ocean in 36 millimeters. Um, so a very balanced, I would say, collection. Sure. So you mentioned uh, Norton and Bentley. Uh, you've got a long-standing relationship with with certainly Bentley and, and Norton more recently. Is that something that you're going to develop? Are there going to be more associations over time? No, we want. We need that, and we have uh, the partnership with Skelly Stager and this brand Auto Known. Right. Uh, we 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 work with um, um, the uh, Ocean Conservancy uh, NGO to fight plastics in the ocean. Um, we 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 have brand partnerships. Um, I think this is very important to create star products within lines. Right. Sometimes people know brightly, they don't know uh, the lines or the names of the lines and this will help uh, to, to, to segment our collection and to make and to give that, that whole collection a, a, a readable um, setting if you want, thanks to the segmentation and to the, I would say, more bottom-up storytelling. Sure. You mentioned that you've made some additions to the separation range, which you've, you've announced over the last few days. Um, the squad concept seems to have worked incredibly well for you. I, I guess that's something that's going to continue to develop and build over time as well. Oh yes, there will be more squads to come. Tonight we're going to launch our uh, triathlon uh, squad. So what we want to be, we want really to be inclusive. We are, of course, an exclusive brand by definition because of the price and because of our limited distribution. But ultimately, in the way we talk to the customer, in the way we feature the brand with our new booty concept, which is more industrial style, uh, loft style, uh, with our more outdoor-oriented uh, products, and with these type of squads, um, I think we, we, we create an image which is very close and where consumers can relate to. Um, and identify to, and this is why we choose activities and sports and partnerships um, which are reachable for everybody in a way. Sure. And that's that's basically our strategy. No. Um, one more question on the on the the ranges. Really, there's been a lot of development with regards to mechanical watches that you've shown over the last 12 months, and some really really nice pieces. Uh, what's the future of the the professional range? The sort of any any digital range? Yeah. So we're launching during the fair, and I, and I posted the, the product uh, just yesterday night, the, the Orbiter 3, the limited edition uh, for Bertrand Picard. There will be more editions in the, in the professional line, um, but really related to specific speed aviation or sports. Um, and uh, this is certainly not a line we're going to neglect, and you will see more products, cool products, outdoor products, sports products uh, next year. Okay, fantastic. Last year when we spoke I think we, we both sort of agreed at the time that the, the Super 8 was probably the star of the show. Are we saying the, the 806 is the 2019 yeah. star of the show yeah. for you? Yeah. yeah. It's I think it's a star of the year in the watch industry. I think so as well. Yeah, yeah it's a standout piece. Yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's amazing and uh, no, no, we're very happy about that. So I'm going to wind up with one final question because I know you pushed for time. Um, it's the same question that I asked you last year. So you've got three watches, one, one elegant, one sports, one aviation. What are you going to take from your current range? I'm wearing this one, uh, which is the Pan Am, which uh, the Air Racer bracelet, which was worn by uh, Miles Davis and, and Serge Gainsbourg. I should wear it with this outfit but, <laughs> uh, because it's, it's very much cool and, and, sure. and short sleeve and... Uh, 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 type of, of, of watch, then definitely the 46, um, uh, the 46 Super Ocean, blue and black. I love blue and black. Yeah. Cool. And uh, and for sure, I would say the uh, um, the Curtis Warhawk with our B01. I love this green and the whole story around that. So these are these. I mean, there are many others, but actually these are the ones I have. Oh, so, so okay. Okay. That's, that's the answer. That's the answer. Super, um, George, thanks for your time. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I know you're busy. I hope you have a fantastic, thanks. successful show. Thank you. And maybe Thank we'll you. do it again next year. It was pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. First day of the show over. Back to the hotel here in Basel. 
A uh, quick shower and change in this evening. I'm a guest at the uh, Breitling Summit, uh, which I assume is going to be a presentation of what the company have got planned over the next 12 months. Day two, I'm going to head back to the show now, see what the other exhibitors have to offer and pop by Brightling to say thank you for their hospitality over the last 24 hours. One thing that's a bit curious about Switzerland is everywhere is so hot, nobody seems to have any air conditioning on. Anyway, back to the show. <music> So uh, what's new uh, with uh, Basel World 2019? Well, not much really. The general layout of the show is as it has been on previous years. What's interesting though is really the lack of development from the big names like Rolex and Amiga. It's a color change here or a dimension change there, but otherwise uh, it's also a fairly common fodder that we've seen before. It has to be said that the big innovators of this show have been bright. So the end of Basel World 2019. I'd like to thank Breitling for their fantastic hospitality this year. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you on the next one.